Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghosts and Spirits series. As promised, I was going to go ahead and start a whole new series here. The first one focusing on the Bell Witch, which some of you have also mentioned as a suggestion. So very good news on that part. And this one I picked specifically because it's going to be a good example of essentially what I'm going to do throughout this new series. The stuff that I'm looking for and how I'm going to present it. Um, one of you had asked already, um, how do I differentiate this between the uh, new series compared to Urban Legends? I guess the best difference is the stuff that I'm going to chronicle in my Ghost and Spirit series, it's more stuff, I guess, that it's concrete. Um, stuff that has been cited as uh, people visiting these things or being visited by these things specific people in other words or very specific locations um, stuff that is far more concrete uh, like for example anything involving like La Llorona or Bloody Mary it's very hard to just nail one specific place or one specific visitation or one specific uh, tale anything that um, is is very I guess absolute when it comes to encountering these things it's more along the lines of friend of a friend or this is a, a kind of story that gets just told who knows how many generations down the line while stuff other stuff like involving the Annabelle doll or the bell witch um, and then some of the other suggestions I mean that's stuff where instead it is absolute you have people very specific people that information has been gathered on of them experiencing this and you also have in most cases like absolute proof you have video uh, you have images I mean, you have uh, stories like uh, of, of what actually happened that's the big difference that 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 it is between the two so in, in my case I think it'll be kinda easy to discern the difference between something going into urban legend side and the other side as far as ghosts and spirits and in actuality probably some of the urban legends that I've done in the past would perfectly fit the new series here so in any case um, you know with your suggestions I'll easily differentiate between the two and then put them between one another so thank you as always again for the new suggestions this one again being the bell witch let's go ahead and we'll We'll start with uh, the Bell Witch and what the history is on this particular entity. This one is perhaps the most famous American haunting ever. I mean, I cannot think of any other haunting that has had a good number of documentations on, uh, a good number of investigations. I mean, we have proof, uh, we have drawings, we have um, encounters that to this day have very little variance compared to some of the other stuff that's out there that's another big difference between um, urban legends and the ghosts and spirits deal it's it's the idea that uh, whatever has happened or whatever continues to happen it seems that a lot of people that experience it have the same thing occurring so that's what makes it more concrete and then of course the most famous thing involving the bell witch has to do with the idea that one of the most famous people in United States history, an actual man that would eventually become president, Andrew Jackson also encountered this particular entity, which I'll describe here in a few minutes. Now the Bell Witch or the Bell Witch haunting was something that occurred back in the 19th century in Adams, Tennessee. Uh, this was, for all intents and purposes, what the most well-known poltergeist case of all time when it comes to American history. What had happened was around that time there was a family called the Bell family and they began experiencing something very unusual. Um, there was something involving an entity, a spirit, a ghost of some sort that began um, having some kind of attacks on the family altogether. Um, this was around the early 1800s. Um, in fact, I think one of the earliest known histories was 1817, if I'm not mistaken. And that 1817, that's when uh, the family, led by a guy named by John Bell Sr., uh, began becoming under attack by, by what people believed was a witch. And what this witch would do is she would do various things normally associated with poltergeists. 
Um, she would make noises. She would have walls being scratched. She would have things being thrown around the house. Um, she would have anything involving um, animals, uh, pets, cats, dogs, uh, livestock. They would just completely be spooked about her experiences. And in some cases, she would actually harm the individuals themselves, either scratching them, slapping them, uh, pinching people, um, all the while, of course, making it so that there was complete um, discomfort from everyone involved and she was having a good time at the at the very same time the reason for this was because some of the noises being heard by the witch had to do with laughter so if something was being done uh, to the family like let's say your family member just got scratched or one of the family members just got slapped then they would encounter laughter or subsequent laughter uh, from whatever this thing was and this continued for quite a while it continued to haunt this family for years on end uh, the family uh, the reason why all of this um, happened was because the idea of who the bell witch was the most common attribute is this was a woman who lived next to the family she was actually a neighbor a woman by the name of Kate Batts and the reason why she started all this was because she wanted to have uh, that land I guess that the family was on for whatever reason she believed that she was cheated by the father John Bell on this land I don't know if it was his land necessarily or if it was some kind of land that she was intending to purchase but for whatever reason she felt cheated by him he got the land instead and so because of it on her actual deathbed she swore that when she dies she was gonna haunt John Bell and all of his descendants thereon thereafter um, in fact uh, the most common thing the most common stories was for John Bell his daughter Betsy Bell was the one who received a wrath the most from this entity so that seems to be the idea of who the Bell Witch was it was actually a woman Kate Batts and whether or not all of this truly came uh, from her curse once she died and once she became a uh, spirit of some sort and she in turn uh, started tormenting this family it remains to be seen uh, if this is 100 percent true but that seems to be the most common thing said as to who this bell witch was in any case the tale of this bell witch it grew so big i mean this poor family suffered this thing for years on in that many people would visit this location from who knows how far along the stories go that people would travel hundreds of miles uh, with, with the intention of trying to see and hear proof of this particular entity and sure enough they would do it I mean uh, whenever she would come across people would uh, hear her voice they would see things they would see uh, stuff being thrown furniture being moved dishes being broken um, she would pull people's noses she would yank hair all that stuff she would do all this and the people would absolutely all the ones that came across would absolutely um, believe that yes indeed this was a poltergeist and it was indeed haunting uh, this house by the way you're looking at a actual picture of the house itself quite fascinating to believe that all of this and one of the most famous stories of a poltergeist haunting has to do with this location this you're looking at it that's the actual house now one of the most famous visitors and as I had mentioned at the beginning of the uh, video here has to do with a man named Andrew Jackson who would of course become a president later on in life and still adorn um, one of our dollar bills in this case the twenty dollar bill and Andrew Jackson he was at that time a guy that was a general he too heard about the stories involving the Bell Witch and what was going on with this poor family he actually became fascinated. I mean, he was somebody that I don't know if he saw it as some kind of challenge or some kind of of thing where, you know, he could prove that maybe it was wrong. But in any case, he decided, let's go ahead. Uh, he had a reputation at the time of the military of being tough, especially with conflicts involving the Native Americans. Um, he wanted to... Um, I guess prove his toughness and take on this infamous entity and so I, I don't know if he did it during his free time or if he had a mission somewhere around that area but he actually went to the house and then here's what happened um, part of this tale is more 
I guess, um, spurious. I don't know if people actually added or embellished onto it. And, and, I'll, and I'll mention that in a minute what part it is. But the one that is, is verified is his encounter uh, going towards the house. So there he was. Him and his party, um, he had a wagon loaded with a whole bunch of materials, the usual stuff involving a, a traveling group of military men. And there they were just traveling, uh, trying to get to their location. When they were about, I believe, a couple of hours away, though, um, th while they were riding on horseback, a very strange thing happened. All of a sudden, the wagon, that I guess that carried most of the stuff, stopped. I mean, it absolutely stopped, 100% as if it was hitting a brick wall completely stopped and no matter how much the driver of that wagon tried and shouted and whipped and did whatever he could to the horse and no matter how much that poor horse tried to pull on the wagon it was as if this wagon was not budging for a single thing as if it too was tied to some kind of invisible rope behind it and it was taut what like the po the rope was taut 100% it would not budge at all of course um, the wagon was not tied to anything but there it was stuck um, on, on the on the ground on the road itself not moving and the men got off they tried to pull on the wagon they tried to push on the wagon um, in fact Jackson um, ordered all of his men to um, do as much as they can to move the wagon but it would not budge at all he even took the additional step of taking his men and ensuring that they can take off the wheels of the wagon to see what was going on but nothing happened they found everything was all right there was no concrete on the wheels there was nothing in terms of any materials that was stopping the wagon just imagine in your head uh, something this large that was rolling along and then it just stops in midair just completely stops altogether finally after a, a great I guess uh, time period uh, the General Jackson he realized and he kind of snapped in his mind what this was and according to the stories he said by the eternal boys it is the witch and the minute he said that there was a very sharp noise a metallic voice of some sort that emanated from the nearby bushes saying all right general let the wagon move on I will see you again tonight that again uh, this is all apparently confirmed this is the the exact stuff that he said and then the reports saying what was heard afterward with regards to this voice and that's where the story goes and then stops altogether um, it, it's not really understood or it's not 100% verified if he actually went to the house thereafter um, he may have a, a left and just went altogether somewhere else and that seems to be the most likely thing, but some other versions of the story state that he still decided to go ahead and visit the Bell Witch House, the 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 one located uh, that you saw the picture on, and his men did stay, and then they too encountered everything else that everyone else had done or had experienced with the same like face slapping and pinching and hair being pulled and screams at night, uh, scratches and all that good stuff. And when that happened, that's when he was apparently quoted as saying, I'd rather fight the British in New Orleans than have to fight the Bell Witch. Although, everything tied to that, as far as him going to the home, that seems to be unconfirmed. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has any more information on that part. Uh, that's what the what part where I think it seems to be more embellished or stuff was added on afterward because the general consensus seems to be that once he had the encounter with the wagon, then that was it. He did not go forward with the home thereafter. But if anyone else has further info as to him actually visiting the home, that'll be interesting to see. But otherwise, the attacks continued for a good while. And it even took to the point where the father, John Bell, eventually died in October of 1820. And in this part, the Bell Witch herself, again, seems to have taken some credit for this. The idea goes, and the story goes, that um, there was one night or one day when uh, John Bell became seriously, seriously ill. Um, he may have actually suffered something involving a stroke. And when the family went to go get um, his medicine uh, while he was laying in bed, they realized that his medicine was completely gone. It was is not there. It was just as if the earth just completely swallowed it up altogether. And instead, 
they realized there was a vial, a very strange looking vial. And when they tested the vial to see what it was, because nobody else had seen, you know, had ever touched the vial or brought the vial or knew who did, but when they tested it on their cat, uh, the story goes that either the cat became very, very sick or actually died. And then that's when they realized something else was going on and it might have been actually involving the Bell Witch herself. So he died on December 20th. Um, and when that happened, uh, there was a funeral that was done for him. And the witch, the Bell Witch, was a purportedly heard to be singing loudly and joyously throughout the funeral. How creepy is that? Imagine there you are, like a pallbearer of sorts, and you're bringing along your dad, and he's in the coffin, and all you're hearing is this disembodied voice laughing and singing the whole time and enjoying this entire moment, and you can't do a single thing about it because uh, this was uh, something that is not materialized. It's not a physical thing. It's just something that just follows you all day long. And then finally, um, the Bell Witch, uh, she said, the story goes that she was going to have um, her appearances were going to disappear. And instead, she would appear intermittently throughout the years. I guess the death of the father was the essential point, the whole purpose of her haunting. And so now that he was dead, um, there really was no need for her anymore. She said, though, that she would appear every now and then. And in fact, at one point, she said that she would appear in seven years from the year of 1821 she apparently did and she made her promise and on top of that she visited the son John Bell Jr. during that same time period where the stories go that she provided with him prophecies of everything that was going to occur including uh, future items like civil war in America and then both World War One and World War Two and then she finally said she would appear strange year she would appear 107 years later that would have been 1935 at that time of course 1935 is coming gone but there has been no single trace of her visiting the area during that time period if she did nobody uh, has mentioned anything as far as any other experiences and then that's been it nothing else involving the bell witch um, as far as her encounters but anything as far like when it comes to her and the support the thing that she did to this poor family it still remains the most absolute famous american haunting yet nothing else comes even close now where the bell witch is currently located besides uh, the location of that actual house itself um, there's the idea that there's a cave nearby the area of the house and people have since called it the bell witch cave which you'll see pictures of here there are tours there are actual tours of this cave so if you're around that area and you wanted to go ahead and take a look at the potential home of the bell witch you can do so to this day and people have seen very strange apparitions at the cave they've experienced cold spots near and around the property they've seen the usual things tied to um, anything involving the paranormal like where you see shadows where you encounter uh, people like the feeling as if you're being watched so that's why that location has become known as the Bell Witch Cave because while she may have left uh, this family afterward and uh, not really created too many new news when it comes to her encounters uh, this location though has been tied to her actual home I guess you could call it a home and what she does um, as far as this the, the daughter Betsy Bell um, she went on to actually live a normal life um, she eventually married a guy named Joshua Gardner um, and then afterward that was it there was not anything else in terms of of any other visitations or apparitions or any other encounters with the Bell Witch some people even claim that this whole thing everything that I just talked about was a prank and it was a prank by a guy a teacher no less of Betsy Bell a guy by the name of Joshua Gardner and he was apparently very much in love with Betsy but for whatever reason she was not in love with him she was in love with someone else and so because of it uh, this guy, I'm sorry, um, the guy that was perpetrating all this was Richard Powell. And the one that Betsy Bell originally did was a guy named Joshua Gardner. But Powell was not happy about this. Like, he was in love with Betsy Bell. And he wanted to do anything he could to try to gain her attention and gain her affection, up to including that point of 
creating pranks and the idea is and some people actually believe this that he did everything everything that I just mentioned it was him it was Richard Powell all the scratchings all the noises all the laughter the evil laughter everything it was him because he was trying to torment the poor family so that way Betsy could break off with this guy Joshua Gardner and in turn uh, this guy Richard Powell could move in and become her lover and for whatever reason the way people believe it there is one truth um, Betsy actually did break things off with that guy Joshua Gardner and he eventually ended up with Betsy so whether um, he was part of it or not it's probably most likely he was not but in either case he did eventually get with uh, Betsy Bell so that's the story that's the information everything I could find when it comes to this Bell Witch again the most documented and most famous um, haunting here in America. Um, if anyone has any more good juicy details that they'd like to state um, uh, regarding the Bell Witch, it would be fascinating to hear. Share with everybody. Please post those comments. Um, if anyone knows any other encounters too, more recent encounters, um, anything involving uh, tales within the 20th and 21st century, then please post that information too. Um, of course, by this point, with it being so famous, there are multiple uh, movies that have been made. I mean, there was The American Haunting, I guess, is the most recent major movie that was made, but others, there's always some kind of sci fi movie or some kind of, of TV channel movie that'll always be made of this particular entity. And uh, we've had, uh, even ghost uh, places like Ghost Adventures. Um, they, they too have have visited the Bell Witch area to try to encounter it. So uh, anything involving this tale, uh, this entity, uh, whatever it was, I mean, it's not going to end. There's still going to be interest, and there's still going to be uh, people uh, making stuff, making materials about it. So, all right, everybody. I hope this is a good indication, essentially, of what the spirits, the Ghost and Spirits series, is going to be like. And I'll be sure to make some more soon. And then, based on your feedback and think how things go, I'll be able to uh, tie it in and make it another permanent fixture of my YouTube channel. All right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care. Bye.